Hi everybody! Today I'm going to go back to um, some mixed media things that I was working on earlier this month and then I stopped because I did not like where it was and I wasn't sure what to do to fix it. Um, I was inspired today by my friend Katie's, um, she made a five minute mixed media piece. She just timed herself and did whatever she could do to kind of get herself out of thinking too much and out of overworking a piece and just spent five minutes with whatever materials she had on hand. So I'm inspired by that. Thank you, Katie. And I'm going to, uh, this video will show you the process of how I got to where I got and then I got stuck. And then I'm going to uh, slow it down a little bit. So no more time lapse. And I'm gonna do a real time look at just taking five minutes and seeing if I can get myself out of my brain and just into my process and into my body and make some bold moves and hopefully push past the stuck point. If you're interested in just seeing from where I got stuck and using seeing the five minutes, um, I will go ahead and put some information in the description that you can just flip right to that. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoy this process and I hope it's helpful for any time you get stuck. And I hope it's helpful. I haven't done it yet. So we'll see what happens at the end. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. So this is where I started a couple weeks ago. Starting from a blank sheet, a couple blank sheets of sketchbook paper, using some Payne's Gray, this dark navy color. It started out messy. It's going to get really messy before this video is over. This one, I will tell you, this one was a, was really challenging for me all around. It just kind of didn't want to get put together. I am really happy where I ended up though. So I wasn't sure about that when I filmed the first segment. But for whatever reason, this whole journey with these two pages was Herculean effort. Um, just the whole way. Not sure why, but it was a really good lesson to me and a good reminder that there's always something on the other side. So there were definitely moments when I was like, I should just burn these and start over. But I didn't, partially because I didn't have any other video ready to go. So I wanted to make sure I put out a video. Um, but more so, I really wanted, I, I was so stubborn that I really wanted to see what would come of it if I just kept working on it. So it was almost, almost like I was taking it personally that it wasn't turning out. And it was, it became a personal challenge to make something out of it that I was happy to look at. Even watching this now, I'm seeing that things didn't come together super easily. Which, you know, is common enough. But knowing what I know now about what I've gone through with this, with these two paintings today, I'm like, oh yeah, that'll do it. I should have known. Which of course is impossible. I really wish I knew what it was that made some art pieces come together quickly and just really easily, where you just know where things are supposed to go somehow, versus when it just feels effortful the entire time. I wish I knew what it was. I have no idea because, you know, I was almost going to blame it on that I didn't have a, a direction when I started this, but I maybe like 1% of the time have an idea of where I want something to go when I start it. I typically don't like to do that. I like to just improvise and figure it out along the way. And I, you know, it, there's, it's just kind of a hit or miss thing. I'm sure there are things that, that help determine, you know, if, if something's going to flow easily or not, but I don't know what they are. 
if that's the case. Also, I notice with this one, typically if I have something that I'm struggling with and I go back to it, going back to it, it becomes this easy breezy, oh, I'll just quick whip, some, whip this into something and it'll be great. And that's what I came into today thinking that, oh, I have these um, two pages that I haven't finished. So I will just come in quick, turn it around and make a quick video and, you know, move on to other things. However, <laughs> that was like, you know, before the next four hours took place. This was a long one. But I, I would challenge you to imagine right now what you think these pieces are going to look like. Although you may have already had the spoiler from the the YouTube thumbnail. Ah, forgot about that. Well, whatever. You didn't get to see the whole picture probably. So think about what you think they're going to look like. And I mean, there's just no way I ever would have guessed what they're going to look like from what they started like and how they look now. I probably could have stopped where that on that left side, it felt close-ish there. Not crazy about the big black dots I put on there, but other than that, I feel like there's something that, that possibly could have added one element or two elements and then been, then just call it and have it be done. However, brace yourself for my amazing amount of overworking and then simplifying. I don't know how this is going to feel to watch, but the during for me was a really big roller coaster. Most of it, just with the roller coaster climbing, tick, 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 up the first giant hill. Not being able to see what's on the other side. It's funny how, as I'm watching this now, like, I... As I'm watching myself do these things, as I see like the glaze being put over that left side, I'm like, oh, that's right. I did do that. But I have no recollection of working on these other than just a faint memory of like, oh, yeah, I did that. I don't think that made any sense. So <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense or not. All that to say when I spend so much time working on something and I'm so present in it, you'd think, or I would think that I'd remember more of the each steps. But as I add layers, I, by the end of it, I completely forget what the under layers looked like. making me nervous and I know how it ends. Please let me know in the comments if this is just like is this is anxiety provoking to watch for you as it is for me or is it literally just me because I went through the roller coaster. I would love to know because I'm not here trying to make anyone anxious but I'm sure there'll be lots of strong opinions on why I did what and why I didn't do other things. So if you have strong opinions, you're welcome to share them, but please share them nicely. So we're getting close to the end of my first art making session with these two. And we're getting 
closer to today's events. So for today, I showed up to these two pages as they were after this session and tried to use Katie's five minute kind of motivational tool just to see if I could stop thinking and come up with something better than this. I'm not 100% sure if I should change the five minute. I did three different five minute sessions. Part of me feels like I should put them into time lapse, but I know that there are many of you who like to have things in real time so you can hear what I'm thinking. So I think I'm going to leave them regular speed in real time, but I make no promises that there's anything valuable in what I'm saying because at one point my daughter came in and totally uh, the train fell off the tracks a little bit. So there was a lot going on with these. They're not actually as terrible as I remembered but there's definitely a lot going on and they're very busy. So stay tuned while I show up to these today in the next section and go for the five minutes. Okay, so I got to this point making this collage or making this mixed media design and then I just stopped. <laughs> Life went on, I wasn't sure what to do next so time just passed. I wanted to revisit it because this is not its end state. I know that, but I don't know what its end state will be. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to put five minutes on the clock and we'll see what happens, um, what I can do in that five minutes. These are some papers I have to potentially collage in if I want to. This is, you know, the dirty version of the white paper that's underneath my um, sketchbook right now. I just use it to cover my desk. Sometimes it ends up with some cool marks on it. I also have some tissue paper, some of these tiny circles that might help block out some large shapes, but still let some of the history underneath here grow up. I've got this trowel that is kind of my emergency tool <laughs> if I need to really just cover some things up white paint, sell it on green, and some black. So I'm gonna take five minutes and I still don't even know what to do. I feel like I'm stalling now to try to make a plan, but we're just gonna go for it. All right, so keep me honest, here's five minutes. Hopefully the ticking isn't too loud. It feels a little <laughs> Mission Impossible-like to me. All right, so I'm gonna start with the trawl and we're just going to get some things covered up. Okay, and if you're like, wow, that's a lot of paint, you are correct. But sometimes you just gotta go for it. Okay, so already I like that better just because there's less in my face happening. So let's see what happens over here. I can also, of course, go in here and make some lines. And then continue up here. All right, that's kind of cool. Maybe do. Oh, that was a fake alarm. why my thing is dinging. Hopefully you can't hear that. Um, okay, so I've got some white. Now, of course, I don't have a whole lot of time to 
dry anything with my hair dryer. So we're just gonna wing it. Got that going. I'm going to get my pencil. Do some scribbles. Join that up. Let's see. Join that up there. So honestly, I'm really liking this a lot more already. But I need something that's not just white. So let's mix. Let's mix some of this white and sell it on together. It doesn't look very dark, but if you just mix this Titan Green Pale with the white or without white and just use it straight, it's actually a pretty dark color. So I don't want to go super dark here. Two and a half minutes left. Clearly I thought I needed more materials than I did. All right, where to go first? I'm gonna go here. So I like how you can get some kind of softer edges using this trowel. And by soft, I just mean, you know, it's harder to tell where the white ends and where the celadon begins. That's not the right metaphor, or that's not the right explanation, but hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. It's not a, it's not a, you know, this paper is a very hard edge. It's very clean. It's very much sticking out into the, into the black and the blue, whereas this, shove it in here it fades a bit but now I need to redo my scribble hmm all right one minute left Jackie what are you gonna do stab myself in the foot making so much of this be trowel because it's really thick paint and it's never gonna dry. That's okay. I think I'm gonna use my last minute to dry this with my hair dryer. And then I'm gonna do another five minutes. Okay, it took a long time to dry that. Um, so now I'm here and I lost my tissue paper when it blew off the table. Okay, so what to do, what to do. I'm gonna do another five minutes and I'm gonna focus on collage this time. And we'll see how I feel at the end of this five minutes because I still don't really have a great direction. So I'm just gonna keep doing this five minutes at a time and try not to think too much and seeing what comes out. Take my tool. Sure I have my gloss medium handy. Five minutes on the clock. Here I go. I really love you guys probably already know this. I really love this paper, these small circles. Pro tip, always double check to make sure that your gloss is your gloss and not white paint. Ask me, ask me why. I definitely reached for gloss and then accidentally sprayed a whole bunch of white paint on my art. Nothing gets your heartbeat going faster when you're art making and all of a sudden you throw paint all over your own painting. Oops. All right. 
Oh, my kiddos are here. Hi, Reese. Okay, honey. All right, honey, I'm doing a video, okay? So I'll be with you in a couple minutes. My honey is too brushed. Oh, wow, fancy. All right, well, the brush is in the kitchen. Are you doing the video? I am. You want to say hi? Yeah. Hi. You want to tell them your name? My name is Grace. And I'm Jackie's daughter. Yep, you sure are the best daughter in the world. And I'll play it today. And this is why I look cute. She looks super cute. They can't see you because this is just a um I know. A, a, an overhead shot, but you sure do look cute. Always. Why are you tying? Well, because I'm doing this super fast five minute thing to try and to try and get this painting in a better way that I like it more. Because I don't really like it a whole lot right now. Eh. Um and I figured the less I thought with my noggin, the more I would have is here. to um, oh, I thought to, that was Elena. to do it. All right. I need to open the window to say hi. No, you don't, Reese. The window's closed. Sweetie, the window's closed. It's okay. Sweetie, do you want to go and um, brush your hair? And then I'll be there in a minute. I am clean and... And love. I am clean and I am loved. You are clean and you are loved? Yeah, I saw, I saw a note that said that right here. I am clean and I am loved. I am loved. calm and I am loved. Why do you throw this away? Oh, because I don't need it right now. Can I keep it then? Let's talk about, can we talk about it in one minute? Okay. All right, thank you. I'll leave it here for the side. Right off. Sure. All right, thank you, honey. Random spin me chomp. Honey, can you please go in the other room and brush your hair? And I'll be right yes. with you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. That's the trick with doing things real time. Okay, well, I like how that worked. Don't think I need it anywhere else. All right, so, 60 seconds left. That's my time. Let me get my daughter settled and I'll be back for another no, five minutes. I can't find my okay, <laughs> sorry about that earlier. That's the danger of working in real time. Um, okay, so good news is this set a little time to dry now. So now I can decide if I want to do some more collage or I want to add some paint and I haven't made up my mind yet. So I'm going to start the timer and we'll see what happens.
All right, well, I have significantly reduced my options, <laughs> which doesn't feel good in this moment. All right, let's see here. TikTok, Jackie. That, I will like that. Turn this edge a bit. Oh, but then I cover over that. Oh, well. Easy come, easy go. to get better at not holding on to things too tightly. I do like that. I'm glad I did that. Even though I like the things underneath it too. Now there's some very plain areas over here. Where's my pencil? Here's my pencil. So I want to make some marks there. I'm just not sure what, because I'm overthinking again. Hmm. Well, here's my, this is my favorite stop thinking too much tool. Many of you have seen this before. It's just a silly, old brush that's clearly damaged. I'll put it against the white. Um, but I love to use it because I can't really tell what's gonna happen with it. And I like that. Okay, so I can tell that something's gonna happen. But I never quite know what. just makes things a little bit more interesting. All right, well, clearly I'm slowing down here. Come on, Jackie, what are we doing? Let's move some of these lines, carry these up here. Okay, there's nothing over here. The limiting part of this five minutes is that since this isn't dry, I was going to do a wash up here, but I can't because I need that to dry first. I will say though, this has gotten me a lot closer to something that I, I enjoy. Still a lot of chaos. But I'm on a much better path now. So I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer. I think I'm going to cut it out with a timer now. So I did three five minute sessions just to get something down. And I think it's really helped change the direction. So I'll see what happens from here. Okay, so I've stopped doing the five minute timer now. And I noticed that this is starting to get really busy again, which is not what I was hoping for. So time to add some more white. If you're starting, if you're starting to think that I have a plan and I know what I want this to look like at this point, uh, you would be mistaken. I still have no plan other than to react to the pieces I've put down and the paint that I've put down.
and some of the choices I'm making are bolder than others. The bold choices are always easier to respond to. However, they're also the most emotionally difficult to make because you have to kill your darlings, right? They're things that you do like that if you want to have free creative expression, you can't, you know, it doesn't work as well. <laughs> you can't be very expressive while trying to save very specific details. So that's really the battle, at least for me. I was looking for more neutral paint that did not work out because it was either too old or there wasn't enough of it in there to get it out in an effective manner. So I'm adding a little bit of quinacridone gold. Honestly, just so it's not all white. But as soon as I did that, I thought, ugh. Now it just looks yellow, <laughs> like old. It looked old and yellowed like a paperback book, you know, 20 years ago. Normally collage saves me. More often than not, if I take out some collage, and actually earlier that did happen with those the black pieces with the small circles. I do think those are good, especially on the left side. I think that's really kind of the star of the show on the left side. So collage often will make the bold move for me, and then I can react to that. For these two in particular, it I was kind of chasing my tail. Say that's how it felt. I'm not sure that's actually what happened, but that's how it felt at the time. But I'm very proud of myself that I kept working at these. Because right about here, I was ready to stop. <laughs> ready to give up and move on and do something different with my day. Because the reason I didn't like them in the first place was that I thought they were too busy. There was too, too many bold elements that there was it was just a lot to look at. This is yellow ochre. I'm adding a little bit of gray to it. I also ended up with some colors that I'm very, uh, that I just don't use. That color in the lower left just looked dirty, but it was still kind of beautiful in its own way, so I went with it. Again, I went with anything for this. That's the freeing part of working on something that you're not overly attached to. If you're not sure what to do, hmm, I don't know, let's try this, see what happens next. adding a little bit of phthalo turquoise and I got that really kind of a grayish I'm gonna call it sea blue if that's a thing which I really like that color My plan now is to mix up a larger amount of it. But I only had the world's smallest paint uh, palette knife. And in my mind, since I'd started this today, doing five minute timed exercises, 
in my mind, I apparently already decided that I couldn't look for my regular palette knife, so I just kept with that one. Very silly. So I really started to like this color combination. It's very chill. It's almost like a really, um, I don't know, it's like, it's like a seafoam green, but not bright. It's very grayed down in the best way possible, in my opinion. So once I found this color, I started to get happy and started to get excited that maybe this would actually turn into something that I liked. So this is a, a more traditional gray version of that color. There's still turquoise in it, but you can see that it's much darker and has more black in it. I've gotten into the habit of using both of the pages in my sketchbook for these like open, I don't know, when I open my sketchbook, I like to have the two going at the same time. And I don't intend for the most part for them to be one continuous piece, right? I don't intend for all of them to be diptychs. I do intend because I'm using the same materials, the same color palette, I mean, right here, you can see the exact same colors on each one and the exact scraps from the same collage paper. Um, I intend for them to go together, but they can also be separated. It's not that big of a commitment as to make it a diptych because I do believe they are two separate paintings, two separate focal points, etc. But it's very pleasing for me to work in these pairs because when I try something on one side and I like it, I think, huh, well, let me use a little bit of that over here, but I'll use it in a different way. So for me, I get more bang for my buck because I get to experiment in two separate ways at the same time. I could do this with loose leaf paper as well, but there's something about having things in my sketchbook that makes it feel I don't know. How does it feel? What do you guys think about your sketchbooks? Do you guys use your sketchbooks like this? For me, my sketchbooks are, it's like my diary. I forget about things and I read, you know, I look at them again. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. But looking through my sketchbooks for me is just like walking down memory lane. it's easier to keep them together when they're literally bound together. You'll have to let me know what you think about this whole process in the comments because I'm very curious. When I rewatched the beginning of this, right from a couple of years ago, not years, geez, from a couple of weeks ago, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, geez, I, maybe I should have left him alone. They were, they were okay. They were, it was fine. But watching this part now, I'm so glad I didn't leave them.
And I'm just mixing different versions of this turquoise gray. Lighter versions, darker versions. I wanted the 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 background here and just those areas of gray and blue to be interesting but also subtly different from each other not crazy bold the white and black combination is bold enough I want there to be some restful areas Overall, I really am happy with how these turned out. These are, these feel very different and very new, especially because it's just kind of one big shape with a more neutral background, which is typically not how I do things. But I like the shapes. I'm very pleased with the shapes. I'm using the paper towel roll, the blue paper towel roll, just to uh, smooth out some of the transitions between colors. And this is a white china marker. I went in with that versus paint just to give it a different look. highlight that area but I already have a lot of white paint <laughs> built up in this in these paintings I was thinking of making some drips with this and I don't know why I was using my finger it seemed like a good idea at the time and this is, I think it's called a ruling pen. I wanted it to drip just a little bit, which is why I'm holding the book vertically. But I really like how those drips turned out. All right, so here's where it ended up. A hard won fight, but I'm happy that I did it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Okay, so if you're interested in seeing where, uh, just the stuck point, I will put some, um, uh, what's it called? I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs>